Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. The show is broadcast live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show and then post it to our website later, and I will, um, so you can watch it at your convenience, and I will be showing at the end of today's show where to see all of the archives. Um, we, do, um, we do a mixture of things here on Encompass Live. Uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products we think you might be interested in. Uh, really, our only criteria is that it is something to do with libraries. Uh, something libraries are doing, something we think they could or should be doing, um, new services and things we to offer to them. Um, we are the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska, so we serve all types of libraries in the state. Um, academic, public, K-12, uh, correctional, museums, anything that has a library in it. So on our show, you will find a huge variety of things. Um, so this is definitely something for anybody who's interested in libraries. We do have uh, guest speakers that come in sometimes to do presentations, but we also have uh, library commission staff. And um, today, that's what I have with me is some, some staff here from the Nebraska Library Commission, uh, Sally Snyder. We're all the way on the side there, is the coordinator of children's and young adult library services here in Sally. And Amy Owen is an information services librarian in our reference department. Um, and so some of you may, I hope, I think you may be aware, this was an on-the-fly session we're doing this morning, kind of. Um, originally, um, today's show is supposed to be all about the Nebraska Golden Sower Award. Um, however, one of our presenters, an outside presenter, was unable to join us this morning. Um, we found out just on Sunday, so we did a quick change and have a different topic for the full show, but we do have the announcement of the winners of the Nebraska Golden Solar Award, um, and um, this is the Children's Choice right. um, yes. Award, and the, um, the original show has been rescheduled for July 24th, so if you do want to hear all about, more about this, um, join us on July 24th, sign up for that, it's available, but we're going to quickly do the announcement of the winners, because I know some people are interested because it was announced just today. Just today. today is May today. 1st is traditionally when they announce the award. So that was one reason we wanted to show today. But since it didn't yeah. work out, we just wanted to announce to you, as you can see on the page there, the um, the winner of the Picture Book Award is Madeline Finn and the Library Dog by Lisa Papp. And the um, honor books are I Am Not a Chair by Russ Barak. And Anything But Ordinary Addie, The True Story of Adelaide Herman, Queen of Magic, by Mara Rockcliffe. The chapter book winner is Maxie's Secrets or What You Can Learn from a Dog by Lynn Ford. And the honor books are The Wild Robot by Peter Brown and Wish by Barbara O'Connor. The Golden Sower Novel Award, the winner is Size by Neil Schusterman. Yay. And the honor book is Project 1065, a novel of World War II by Alan Gratz. And another honor book is The Girl I Used to Be by April Henry. And she says further down that there were 69,062 students who wow. voted this year for their favorite book. And she sends a thank you to all of the teachers, media specialists, and librarians who promoted the books in their schools and libraries, because that's what makes the program a success. Mm -hmm. So yay. And that's from Kathy Schultz, as you see listed there, the chair of the Golden Star Award Committee, um, who was unable to join us this morning. So um, she'll be back with us in July, though, to talk all more about the, yes. um, the award itself and, and how people can be involved can be if they want to. In it. Yeah, next time. Awesome. So congratulations to all the winners. Yes. And good job. Good. I don't know if they've already been contacted or not. I think they I tried to so. do that before the actual before they announcement. The public announcement. Yeah. It's, it's almost like winning the Newberry or the Caldecott Award. Yeah, it it's is. It's pretty close. Yeah. Awesome. All right, great. Well, thank you very much, Sally. All right. And you can go there just by typing goldensolar.org mm -hmm. is the Golden Solar's webpage location now. And I believe she said they're also going to have it on their Facebook page as well. Oh, yeah, Facebook, that, yeah. that was going to be out there, too. All right. Well, thank you. All right. So on to today's topic, um, what we actually um, came up with. Um, we had to have something to fill in very quickly, yes. but luckily we have things on hand that we can do. Um, one book for Nebraska kids and one book for Nebraska teens is a project um, that 
hear um, that Sally and Amy work on uh, the Nebraska Library Commission. So I'm just going to hand over to you guys to uh, go through it and tell us all about it. Um, so if you are looking for the page about this, there's a couple of different ways you can get there. But if you type in the search box up there in the corner and you just type the word one, and then you see there's all our one book things. There's, there's one the one for things. Nebraska for everything, but then there's kids and teens, which actually bring you to the same the page. Same page but, um, and so you look down a little, about fourth one is the. So this is just um, the main page. It's also on the um, Nebraska Center for the Book page. Is that right? Yeah, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. okay. That is okay. Just in case you, you encounter it in another way, it mm -hmm. could be that one. And we have just some basic information about the program there at the top. And then you can see one book for Nebraska kids and teens, 2019. So um, our kids book is A Long Pitch Home by Natalie Diaz Lorenzi, who we're hoping will be able to log into the program for mm -hmm. a few minutes today, maybe like around 10, 15, she was thinking. Mm -hmm. um, we're hoping to hear a little bit from her and ask her a couple questions before she has to go um, off again away from us and the the book for teens is the boy in the black suit by jason reynolds who is very busy as well you we know so but now we just heard today. yes we did reach out to jason but he is as uh, said, very busy um with other um, events and writing as he said but um we did um he is going to be actually here in nebraska in september at the um the Plum Creek uh, Literacy Festival. Saturday only. Right, the, Saturday the only. Adult day. Um, yeah, Plum Creek Literacy Festival is uh, an annual event that we have. I'm not sure if you want to talk about that a little bit. Um, they, yes, um, Concordia University puts it on every year for I don't know how long. It's been quite a few years. And they have the Thursday and Friday are days for kids to come and work with authors and and um, I'm not even exactly sure what all happens depends on who the author or illustrator sometimes too they work with them and then on the Saturday they call that the adult conference you can see their children's day it's just 1996 yeah. 1996 isn't that great and it's been an annual mm -hmm. uh, conference since then on their on the Concordia campus and you can see Many of the speakers. Casey Camillo is the luncheon speaker, and that's for Saturday. For Saturday. Be on Saturday, yeah. Um, I shouldn't tell them that because I haven't signed up yet and wanted the lunch ticket. <laughs> if you get my lunch ticket, it's okay. Some of them are on on the Friday for the kids to me, and a few of them are just on Saturday. Okay. Kate is only on Saturday, and Jason, there he is, is also um, listed as just on Saturday for the adult. Mm -hmm. But he will be here in in Nebraska mm -hmm. at this event. So if you were interested, so you just stand in line to get a book autograph and just say thanks for coming to Nebraska. Mm -hmm. To however many authors I can line up for mm -hmm. at the end of that. We just want to make sure you knew that he will be here, though, um, winner of our one book selection. Right here. And I don't know how you can check to see if Natalie. Oh, Lorenzi. Yeah, I am organizing things here. Here, this one. I'll, I will let you know. Thank you. I just don't want to leave her wondering why we're not talking to her. No, because no, we I do want it. to talk to her. So I just have some in basic background information about the one book for Nebraska. I'm the one who named this, and I'm the only one who always says it right. <laughs> oh. Because it was in my brain. <laughs> because we're so used to one book, one Lincoln, one book, one Nebraska, and one book, and other places, and that all makes sense. But when I looked at, at this, I thought, one book, one Nebraska kids, just didn't flow to me, and that's just probably my brain. So I just thought, one book for Nebraska kids or teens. Let's just do it that way. So don't worry if you pronounce it wrong. If, if, if you only have to type the word one into the search box and, and you'll, you'll find the page. So it doesn't matter what you call it. And we don't send a plaque or anything. I never thought of that. We just this me. People, how many plaques do people need? I don't have to think about that. So um, initially this was suggested by Sharon Osenga, who was then the administrator of the Meridian Library System. Right after I became the children's services person, I went out and had a, a meeting with her. We talked about lots of ideas, and this was her idea. She said, 
one book, not one the breast is great, but we need that for kids. Mm -hmm. So we talked and I said, you know, let's try that. So we started off with in um, 2007, 2008, the book that we selected because it was Sharon's idea and her suggestion for the book, Rescue Josh McGuire by Ben Michelson. And we do have information. Bottom, yeah, we yeah. do have, even as we move along through the years, you guys have kept links to all the previous ones too. So you can always jump down to a previous one if you wanted to. So um, when we started, we were naming a kid's book one year and a teen book the second year. So you can see there's the, the kid's book. And then the teen book was um, The Book Thief by Martha Suzak. And so that's why they have those two year spans there, because it was the team book for two years until we named another team book. But that was confusing, me as well as other people. <laughs> and so um, in 2013 is the first year that we had both. We just went ahead and said, you know what, here's our kids book, here's our team book. And so there they, there they are, Aliens on Vacation which I think is hilarious. <laughs> and Leviathan by Scott Buster Phelps, which is also, <clears throat> that's a steampunk story. It's the first book in a three book series as it turns out. So um, that's how that got started. And people have asked me before, how do the books get selected to be the one book for the rest of kids or teens? Well, for a number of years when I first started, we had a youth advisory board for the library commission, which was um, put together by people who volunteered, librarians, school and public librarians who worked with children or with teens. And they met a couple times a year and then sometimes over, um, we had a different system then, I, I can't remember what it was called, but we met via long distance viewing of screens. Oh, video conferencing. Video, video conferencing, yes. that's it, thank you. <laughs> and one of the things that they did for us was just read and discuss first suggest titles and then read and discuss the ones that had been suggested and make it have a vote and it won by vote i only got one vote but i guess that's only fair <laughs> so they did that for many years and then that group kind of faded away because there wasn't really enough other things i had for them to do at that time and, and they all of course everybody's always busy so then we formed a special committee just for this task and that was made up of a few staff people at the commission, plus a few librarians out in the, in the state who were interested to and make suggestions and read the books that were nominated, so to speak, for lack of a better word. And that worked for a while. Now it's just a small group of librarians at the library commission making this decision. So if you want to, to join in, you certainly are welcome. I can send you a list of what's been suggested so far, which is mostly in my brain right now, but I can type it up, not a problem, for next year because we really want to get things looked at, discussed, and settled before fall conference. That's kind of a, a good deadline so that we can let people know what's it going to be next year. They can start planning mm -hmm. for what books they might want to have discussed. And also, um, <clears throat> that's another chance for people to give a suggestion for the year after that. Mm -hmm. I'm always happy to hear suggestions. If you know of a book, it doesn't have to be new. Mm -hmm. Rescue Josh McGuire was not new in 2007. It had been around a few years, but it was a good choice for starting up this program. Um, discussing that, the kids book is generally aimed at grades four to six, roughly, and the teen book is most often for high school level. When we were first discussing this, I had a lot of librarians tell me, we need a high school book, a high school level book, because the, the Golden Sower novels list, the novels is the oldest group of books, and it's really for grades like grades 7, 8, 9, or 6, 7, 8, really more middle school, which is fine. They need books too. But we didn't really have anything that was, here's a book for, for high school students. So we most of the time, we've really tried to make this teen book be for, you know, nine and, and up ages, maybe eight and up, but generally in that area. Of course, we all know kids read at different levels and different speeds and different interests all the time. So if they're not reading at that level, but they really want to read that book, they will. Oh, goodness. So that's kind of how we came up with those age groups. And, um, 
Okay. No, no, it's okay. I, I've um, just been kind of lecturing. It's time for discussion. No, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> no, I just said Natalie has joined us. Oh, yay. If um, we wanted to. Um, yes, please. Uh, Natalie, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Do you happen to have a webcam at all on your computer? I, let's see, I do. If but you let me be able to see oh, this I, option now in your GoToWebinar interface where you can share your webcam. Okay, let me see. Oh, I see. Share my webcam. Okay. We didn't warn you about that, did we? Okay. Oh, that's okay. Can Great. you see me? <laughs> Yay, here I am in my office. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, um, if you don't mind answering a few questions, if there's something you want to say right off the bat, well, the first thing I wanted to say is um, really just my thanks to the whole commission, to everyone who was on the committee. I was really thrilled when actually a librarian friend um, told me that I that a long pitch home was um, was a pick for this year, along with um, Jason Reynolds' um, Boy in the Black Suit. So I was completely thrilled. I'm an assistant principal now at an elementary school in Fairfax County, Virginia, but I used to be a school librarian for six years right before that. So um, I was just really thrilled, and I really just am so appreciative of all of you who get books into the hands of kids. So thank you for choosing my book. I really appreciate it. Did you want to talk about how her selected what was her if there you were, guys did have discussion about it we did have a discussion and, and there were only about five books being i can't i can't remember the other titles at this point but this mm -hmm. one had a lot going for it it had um immigration to the u.s from another country it had adapting not only to now bill all i hope i'm pronouncing his name right bill all he already knew english but it wasn't his first language and so and also right. when you learn English or when you learn any language you learn more of the, the more formal and, and mm -hmm. so the the vernacular is kind of lost on you a lot of the time so he had a lot of adjusting to do and also the difference between cricket and baseball was right mm -hmm. so he is a is a hang in there kind of kid <clears throat> right and also That's he true. See his father who can't come with them right away there's some kind of issue happening that you don't know at first in the book what that really is. So right. Had a lot of, that's one of the criteria for selection is it provides discussion. There are a lot of different things that kids can latch on to as, you know, things that they hadn't thought about or that, you know, I, I, I don't know how cricket works, so I didn't know what the difference was between the games <laughs> and how it all makes sense. <laughs> all of these things are kids that, the things that kids can talk about. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something, it's funny that you said you don't know much about cricket because when I set out to write the story, I didn't know much about cricket either. Um, in fact, I had heard of the game and that was about it. So, um, but I wanted to bring something um, that's really popular you know, in many countries around the world, including the UK and Australia, New Zealand, um, but also, you know, of course, India, Pakistan, you know, those um, many countries, that's the sport uh, for them. So I had to do a lot of research. I also had to do a lot of research because I was writing outside of my culture. And that's something, um, you know, before, well, before I was a school librarian, I was an, an ESL teacher for nine years. So I've worn different hats in the school system. And I just had so much respect for the children who would come to my classroom. And some of them did come in thinking they knew English and they did know, you know, a lot of English, but the slang really throws them for a loop. It's really, you know, it's really tough. So I wanted to um, create a character that, um, that my ESL kids could identify with, but also that would give sort of a window into the life of of someone for a, a child who who doesn't have a second language and hasn't had to change cultures. But that said, I got a lot of help, and I think whenever anyone writes outside of their own culture, it, you have to have readers who will vet your manuscript for you. And I was really thankful to have two in particular. One of them um, was she was working on her PhD at the time. She was raised in Karachi, Pakistan and came here um, and raising a young son. So she really took time out of her life to to help me out with the manuscript. And also there's another um, author, Hannah Khan, who wrote Amina's Voice. Um, she has that middle grade out. She lives not too far from me and she's a good friend. So she um, also um, helped me with that manuscript. So I wanted it to feel authentic, um, not only culturally, but also, you know, in terms of cricket. So if there are kids reading it who do know how to play cricket, I didn't want to be outed as someone who didn't know. So I had to make that believable. So that was something that I had to also vet through someone who knows how to play cricket, which is not me. <laughs> so, yeah. 
Well, you kind of answered my first question I had for you, which was how did it, how did this book come about? Because um, I'm always interested in, in, you know, this was a wonderful final product, but how did you get there? And you kind of told us between your ESL kids and your experiences traveling when you were young. Right. And and to latch onto that too, Bilal is a very, very minor character in my first book, Flying the Dragon. He's, um, he's in the classroom of, he's one of the kids who helps. There's a scene where one of those main characters, Hiroshi, is trying to lead his kite to safety sort of thing. And there's a group of kids around him. So um, he's a, so a very, very minor character. And then my characters in my first book show up very in, in quick, quick scenes um, in, in A Long Pitch Home. But I knew there were some kids' stories from the first book that I still wanted to tell. And so that's sort of where Bilal came from himself. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's great. Do you have plans to expand on any other characters into another book? You know, um, I, right now I'm working on a book that's completely different that is, um, that's actually set in Italy and it's an American girl. My husband's from Italy and my family, we have three kids and we used to live there. And so, um, culturally for me, that's, um, an easier fit in terms of writing about, you know, this culture. But if I were to ever write um, a story, I, I mean, I am interested in writing a book from Jordan's point of view, the girl who's on his baseball team. Um, so that's something that's in the back of my mind. I haven't started anything with that yet, but if I were to, then I, um, I would like to explore her story some more and see where that leads. So we'll see. That sounds wonderful. I'd read that one too. <laughs> I have not read the first book, so I'm going to have to go back and pick that one up. Oh, could you repeat that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Oh, I just said I have not read your first book that you were talking about. Gotcha. So I have to grab it from the library. Okay. <laughs> okay. Another question I had for you was what was your favorite thing about this book, A Long Pitch Home, about either in the process of writing it or what came out on the page? What's one of your favorite things that happened? That's, you know, that's a good question. I think um, a lot of kids will ask me, you know, which character I identify with the most. And because I'm female, they think that I would identify with Jordan. But my dad was in the Air Force when I was growing up. So we moved a lot and I went to five different elementary schools. And the longest elementary school stay I had was second through fourth grade and really the first two weeks of fifth grade in uh, Bitburg, Germany. We we're um, on an Air Force base there. And the next station was in San Antonio, Texas. And um, Texas has a really strong culture, I have to say. Um, I don't know if you can say a state is patriotic for their state, but they, you know, they really are. So I... I looked like I fit in and I sounded like I fit in, uh, but I really did not fit in. So, and this is before the internet, so I wasn't really, um, really caught up on American culture, really, um, never mind the Texan culture. So I really identified the most with Bilal. So some of the, and, you know, with my dad being stationed in different places, um, I know the feeling, you know, Bilal didn't know if his dad would come back or when he would come. And there was more worry there when my dad was deployed. Um, you know, we had those same, you know, kinds of worries. So I think for me, the part that really sort of choked me up every time I went back to edit and revise is when Bilal comes home from the airport and his dad has not shown up. And so his uncle is taking the signs off the door, the welcome home signs. And, it, you know, and so he gets really, deter you know, he wants to put him back up and he's, he, he kind of um, loses it for a moment there. And so that part really, um, I think th I, that kind of thing has never happened to me before, but I think, um, yeah, I think that that scene is the one that's probably the, that sort of touches my heart the most, I think. Um, from the books. And then the one where um, Jordan ends up when her dad comes home, she and um, Bilal shows up with his cousin Jalal and sees the yellow ribbon now around his tree. So those are the kind of things that for me touched me the most personally, but, um, but also the, you know, some funny moments, my ESL students, um, their interpretation of American culture and slang um, and their ability to laugh at themselves. You know, sometimes they'll say things that are, you know, that are funny. And then when I was first learning Italian, when we lived in Italy, oh my gosh, I said a million things wrong. Um, I had to learn to, to laugh at myself. And I also lived in Japan for two years. Um, when I was younger, I was teaching first grade there. So I said, I probably don't even realize all the things I said wrong in, in Japanese because the culture is very different. The Italians will when you say something wrong, they look at you like, you know what? Um, but the Japanese are, are much more, I don't want to say more polite, but it's just different. You know, they, they won't call you out or they'll just nod and they'll smile and just very gracious. So I don't even, I didn't get that verbal and, and expressive feedback on my mistake. So, um, so I do know what that's like, um, you know, that sort of confusion that he has, 
in the regular classroom and that feeling of knowing that, yes, I am funny in my own language or I'm smart in my own language in certain ways or whatever, but I can't express that. So that's something that I myself have identified a lot with in other countries. Yeah. Thank you. That's great. I was also wondering, since you're still there, I know you have to go pretty soon, and I don't want to keep you <laughs> yeah, That's okay. Thank you. And so if anyone on the line with us, anyone in the audience wants to ask a question, go ahead and type it into your question section so you can ask Natalie a bit before she has to go. Or okay. if you have a microphone, let me know. You can ask your question that way. Okay. My question was, now, I'm assume, making an assumption, which is a bad thing, that your first book is also this for this age group as, as yes. well as the long age home. So have you thought about other age groups that you might be interested in writing for, like a picture book or a book for older teens? I mean, little school. Yes. Does that occur? That's a great that? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. I have, so I have written some picture book manuscripts. I would love to um, have one published one day. I've had, some, you know, the, the sort of, you know, I've written some manuscripts that were just a no-go, and then I've written others. I've writ I wrote one that went to acquisitions at three different houses, but and I even did revisions for one editor, but ultimately it was not it was not accepted. So that's the thing that's interesting about being an author is is um, you know you get one book published and then another, and you think, it, but it's still hard work. You know, you still have to put in the work, and you still have to you know. Um, some of it's a bit of luck, you know, in terms of the market, um, that kind of thing. But it, but my process was very different with both of my books. The first one, Flying the Dragon, I wrote the entire thing, but nobody was waiting for that at the time. I didn't have an agent representing my work. I didn't have an editor. I had a critique group that I'm still together with. After 13 years, we all weekly will take turns submitting pages. So, But the first one, when I got stuck... You know, I just put it to the side and picked it up when I wanted to. But for a long pitch home, that one I sold to the same publisher, but on proposal. So I had three chapters written and a synopsis. And I thought when they accepted it, I thought, oh, great. You know, I won't have to write the whole thing and risk them saying no, thank you. Um, but being creative on a deadline was really tough. You know, so I would I had these deadlines and I'd be writing and I would say, insert poignant moment when Bilal realizes this, you know, and then I would just keep going to the next scene because I, I didn't have time to let it um, simmer as much as, you know, as so I don't think that I would do an, a, a book on proposal again, I don't think, but, but that is um, appealing about a picture book is that you can work on the entire manuscript and put it aside and then come back to it and it doesn't take you hours and hours and hours to reread what you wrote the last time. You know, so that, and I think as a as a former school librarian, picture books are just, um, they really are just little works of art, just a, a, like a package of, you know, the words and the the images, the illustrations are just, um, th they really are gifts, you know, I think to to readers. So I do hope one day that I'll be able to write uh, or to publish a uh, picture book. Young adult, um, maybe one day, but I think you know because I work at an elementary school, that's sort of my you know day to day feedback and you know my observations of kids so that's sort of my um my lane for right now i would say uh for i was just curious about you talking about the picture books would you are you an illustrator as well or just the author no, no, I would just be the author. A lot of kids will ask if I've done the covers. Uh, there's no way. <laughs> no, you would not want to read a book that I've illustrated. <laughs> I'll yeah. stick to the writing. <laughs> For sure. Do you have any illustrators in mind that you'd work with or you would be wanting to work with? Or is that you know, I, yeah, I feel, I mean, there. I, I just heard um, one of my critique group um, partners, Kip Wilson, her book, White Rose, just came out. It's a novel in verse. Um, it's uh, Kwame Alexander has an imprint and it's one it's one of the first books in that um from that that house to come out or that um his imprint to come out so they were in town um the group of them um in washington dc and i went to hear her speak um but all of them spoke and kadir nelson was there and i just oh my gosh he is he is amazing i mean i mean there are people who i mean i would just be of course, honor to work with. But then, you know, obviously it depends on the type of story you write. If it's a fun, bouncy story, then Kadir Nelson wouldn't be the person to illustrate it, you know. So, um, but I'm just in awe at the at the talent that illustrators have, you know, to create their work. So it's, it's a nice, um, from what I've heard in the picture book world, it's a nice partnership um, 
you know, typically the author and the illustrator don't collaborate. Um, sometimes they do. So that, that must be an interesting process. But my friends who are picture book writers say it's really fun to see those illustrations come back and how they've, the illustrator has interpreted their words and it often adds different layers um, that they didn't expect. So I think it, it becomes something that neither illustrator nor author could achieve on their own, but it's something even greater. So that seems like a fun process for sure. Definitely. One of the things I've observed in my, I review books for our state and okay. I couldn't write a book if my life depended on it. <laughs> but I am amazed at the, the skill that people have to write anything wonderful like your book, but also picture books are hard yeah. to write. Because yes. You have to aim it at the level of kids, but not talk down to them make it right. clear and understandable, and of course the artwork adds to it, but I'm really impressed with people who have that skill. That's With picture books, I think... Um you know, they say that if you start out to teach a lesson, then it's not going to work. You know, so you, you know, you write the words, but you have to, it has to be read aloudable, I guess, if that makes sense. You know, it has to roll off the tongue and, right, as librarians, you know, so, yeah, so, and the page turns have to work in building suspense in that way. So there's, there's a lot to it. They seem simple and straightforward, but um, I really admire people who can pull that off because it's a lot, it, it's, um, uh, it's a creative process that requires a lot of thinking and planning and redoing and redoing and redoing again and again. It's different from so. doing a, a novel. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, writing novels for young readers, there is an economy of words that you have to sort of keep in mind. You can't go on and on and on about you know, a blade of grass or <laughs> whatever that may be. Um, you know, you need to get to the point and you need to hook them in the beginning and you need to, you know, sort of be succinct um, as opposed to, let's say, an adult novelist, but um, with picture books even more so. I mean, you just have so few words that you can spend, so to speak, um, and you need to pick exactly the right words. And I think as a former librarian and as a parent, you know, you also have to write something that will be read aloud again and again and again. You know, when those kids come and say, Mommy, would you, you know, can you read this again? So my kids are all teenagers now, but we have picture books that I've read. I mean, it has to be hundreds of times. So, so it has to be something that appeals to the reader as well, um, but yet the, keeping firmly in mind that your audience is children. So th that's a tough balance, I think, to, to achieve, for sure. Well, I have to say that one of the things that's happened to me with all the reading of picture books on upper elementary level, middle school and high school books is it has completely spoiled me for adult books. <laughs> I don't think I'm <laughs> That's that is <laughs> that's so true. My mom is always saying, my mom is saying, Natalie, would you read an adult book? I was like, well, I don't have time, you know. So, yeah, no, I agree with you. <laughs> it's funny. There's so many new stories, so many more new stories. Reading the teen or yeah, right and. And I think lately in publishing, it's been exciting to see people, you know, just the own voices movement, which may sound funny coming from me who did not write, you know, um, from my own culture, but for the first two books, but I really respect people who are getting their voices out there. And I'm really excited about the publishing industry that is welcoming, you know, the, their agents and their editors that are actively looking for voices that are not heard um, as often. I think especially Native American voices that are authentic. As a librarian, I had a ton of books about, you know, Native American Indians, but the authenticity, um, when you look through a lens of authenticity, um, you know, not a lot of them were, were there. Definitely when I was growing up, um, you know, there wasn't, um, I can't remember a single Native American author. So, so it is, um, it is nice to see, uh, you know, already I think that this, you know, middle grade and picture books and YA are engaging, but it's really exciting to see more voices coming um, to the shelves as well, for sure. Thank you. I agree as well. I think you did a great job of, of with, now again, I'm a, I'm a Christian white woman, so what do I know? But to me, <laughs> you're job representing that culture in your book, and I'm thrilled to hear about the people who were helping you with that to be sure you were on target with um, the, his reaction yeah, to the things that were in the, that the family were doing together for different events and things. So I really appreciate right. that you put that effort in. 
Well, th- well, thank you. And I, like I said, I could not have done it without them. So I really appreciated their help. And I also appreciate, again, I'd like to thank you all before we say goodbye. I'd like to thank you just really for uh, the time that you put into reading books every day and, and getting the word out about books in, into the hands of your readers. So thank you for all that you do as well. But we really appreciate your time to come and talk with us about your book and about your writing process, especially at the last minute like this. We all had to pull this together. No, that's fine. It was my pleasure. And this is all because uh, Krista happened to notice what was it where you found that that's oh, your contact information yes. on your web page. I saw your tweet about the fact that you rediscovered oh, that your contact I, I, that something was broken on your website, and that's why I told Sally reach out again. She probably didn't see the first one at all. That is. I did not see it at all, and I felt so terrible, and I thought, oh, my goodness. So because somebody who is, um, again, a librarian friend of a friend of, you know, the, the library connection said, you know, so-and-so mentioned that they've been trying to reach out to you, and it, and I went to the page. Not only was it out of date, I needed to, you know, update it, but um, – but I realized it wasn't working and I felt terrible. So I'm glad that you reached out again. I'm glad that you per- persevered. Absolutely. Uh, we do have just one comment on um, that came in from um, one of our staff here who's watching. It says, cool. thanks to Natalie for your answers and information. Um, I always, always enjoy hearing about an author's process, no matter who they are writing for. Um, thanks for your time. And military kids are amazing individuals. <laughs> oh, and I would agree. Thank you very much to her for or him to, for writing in. And, and I agree. I think that we definitely, you know, thank our military members for their service, which is exactly what we should be doing. And I, whenever I can, I always thank the families of the military um, person for their service in, in a sense, because it, you know, it does take a village and also the people who support them. So, um, yeah, thank you for pointing that out. That's um, I'm in agreement. Yeah. Is there any other what anything else you want to tell us before you need to leave? We I don't want to kick you off, but I also <laughs> want to be sensitive to your time frame here. So all right. No, I think um, really I just really have enjoyed this and uh, enjoyed the process, and I'm really honored that that you all chose a long pitch home along with um, the boy in the black suit. I'm re- just really honored, and I thank you all for your time. And you may not have heard us say that this um, program will be on our. Nebraska Library Commission YouTube page. Oh yes, we are going to go up there every every week. That's so. not a bad time to tell you that. <laughs> oh, okay, no, that's good. I appreciate that. I'll have to subscribe to that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We'll let you know when it's available. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you again, and thank you to your listeners. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you thank for being with us. Okay. Take care. Thanks again. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Now, now we're going to give Amy a little time to chat about some her, her involvement in this whole process ah. which say thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> well Sally gave me the chance to make some of the puzzles and games that That's a nice you can find yes <laughs> I think it's the fun part it, it is it, it really is the fun part so um it gives me a chance to read the books and, and really get in depth with um some of the different vocabulary and quotes that are used so you can find all of those on the One Book for Nebraska Kids and Teens page <coughs> for each year. So we've got, uh, for each book, we have several puzzles, crossword puzzles, um, <coughs> a tile puzzle will, will yeah. so it's got a scrambled phrase, and <coughs> it's got it in a couple different versions, so one's a little more tricky than the other, and you just can cut those out and rearrange them. Um, I think it'll be back there. Oh, yeah, we got to do back to the puzzle, letter, drop puzzle, uh, word search. And then um, sometimes we have some discussion questions, so I haven't quite got up there yet. So. I'm, I'm working on it. It'll <laughs> be done pretty soon. Uh, and we have those for for each year that we have for each book. I um, also wanted to mention that this year we don't have a book club kit for these two titles. I was wondering about that, actually. Yeah. Um, but we do have them for most of the other titles for mm-hmm. other years. So if you if you wanted to check these out, um, you can check out last year's mm-hmm. Charlie Joe Jackson or Killer of Enemies. And we have the same puzzles and we have discussion questions. And you can check out between like 10 and 20 copies, I think, usually of, of each of these books. Go ahead and click on that so they can see yeah. what it looks like when you take them and that'll take you to the entry for that. And then you can request that kit. 
I do with Mayor to you. Not even have some no, audio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Audio 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 audio. Audio. <laughs> Um, we don't, we aren't planning on it at this point, so mm -hmm. this wasn't the budget yeah. for it this year, so we would happily take donations. Yeah, yeah, that's a good <laughs> yes, if you have copies you want to donate, because create some more club kits for us for the, this year's books, yeah. And then this, the discussion question sent us for the ones for this year's, mm -hmm. um, as you saw, there isn't one, we're still working on we're still getting working one on for those, the yeah. um, kids one, but the team was actually the sometimes these are things that you guys come up with, but sometimes, as you can mm -hmm. see in this case, the publisher They're themselves really created a curriculum, so, yeah. yeah, questions. So, um, yeah, a curriculum guide for it. So, but yeah, that just gives you something else to talk about with your kids. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, coming up with those levels was a lot of fun. Um, one more thing to do on my lunch break. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and we don't know how people would actually use them because our reporting process is um, kind of lacking. Yeah, that's probably my fault. But I know that people, um, who, there are libraries in the state who do book discussions with these books both schools and public libraries, and they, some have told me they use the puzzles as kind of a take-home thing for the yeah. kids. Yeah. They come and they discuss the book and then they get a, the tile puzzle or the letter drop. Mm -hmm. Would you click on the letter drop puzzle? Sure. Yeah. I just think that's so fun because you just look at the line and you, and you yeah. pop the letters in there. Yeah. There's lots of letter drops and letter grays. Yeah. Yeah. So. Either way. Yeah. But yeah, each line was built <coughs> into one of those boxes above it, and it'll rent you a form of grade. Oh, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the answers are available too, so you don't have to solve it yourself. Yeah. Just yeah. give the kids the answers at the end. Just don't let the kids know where yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> or, or do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fun one to make, and the, the crosswords are really fun to make too. Mm -hmm. See, I'm really bad at making crosswords because I'm. I, that's why I, I did the the um, clueless crossword puzzle because I can't come up with good clues to crossword puzzles. Yeah, so, yeah. Just uh, we have to fit in oh, the just have the words. Yeah. Oh, and figure out where they know, fit. Yeah. When you find the one that only has one, then I better that's perfect. Pop that yeah, in that first. one's obvious. Yeah, and <laughs> then you build on that because. I'm not good at writing, writing clues. It's either really, my clues are either really obvious or terribly obscure. Okay. There's no middle of the road for, for anything else in the deck. Well, and some, some of these books are easier than others um, as far as I try to come up with a list mm -hmm. of very distinct words that would define the book. But then trying to have different words for the crossword puzzle versus the word search. I don't want to just use the same sure. word oh, yeah. over and over again. So that makes it a little more challenging. So we talked a lot about the um, the kids' book. Do you like to talk a bit about the boy in the black suit? Because mm -hmm. about its selection process and what it's about and everything. We probably yes, should do there are going to be description, um, what I call blurbs. I sent them to Danica. I don't think she's here this morning, and they will go up there to give you just an idea. But in the boy in the black suit, the main character, Matt. Yeah. There. Thank you. <laughs> He's 17 and his mother has just passed away. And his father is uh, had been on the straight and narrow while his mother was around, but now he's drinking too much because that's how he, what he was doing before, but his mother kept him in, you know, kept him from doing that. And now she's gone and that's how he's um, grieving. And then he ends up in the hospital because of that drinking. So the 17 year old Matt, he doesn't have any brothers or sisters. He has a good a friend who runs the funeral parlor down the street, and that man offers him a job there. So that's why he's the boy in the black suit. He starts wearing his black suit to school because then he can just go right to the funeral home from school. And so, and the, all the kids, there's some school um, scenes, but not that many because it's more about him um, relating to, I think the man's name is Mr. Ray, who kind of taking care of him right now because nobody else is. And also how he watches the funeral and other people grieve so he can see 
what should I be doing? How can I grieve? And he starts up a friendship with a, a girl about his age who, I think her name is Renee, see? Or not? Or am I wrong? No. Love. Love. Her name Love, was Love, but she was wearing the Renee name That's tag when they met her. Yeah. So he thought her name was Renee, and mm -hmm. her name was Love. And, and they kind of, she's just buried her grandmother, I believe. Yeah, they need a funeral for And her. so they kind of help each other in dealing with the loss and the moving on. And, and uh, so Matt has both the loss of his mother and his father's and his own loss of self to deal with as well. Of course, it's by Jason Reynolds, so it's very well written. And uh, there's lots of discussion points in this mm -hmm. book, too. That Well, one of the things I really enjoyed about this was um, obviously as a female, I'm not, I don't have a male perspective, but I really enjoy getting inside the head of this teenage boy and um, how he, you know, he could have given into peer pressure and then goofing off with his friends. He was supposed to have a job lined up from going to school half days for good grades, but when his mother passed away, the job he had lined up for the second half of the day kind of fell through. Yeah. And, uh, he could have just, you know, hung out on the streets with his friends and, and gotten into trouble, but instead, he, um, his, his mentor comes into his life and offers him this chance, and so he's, he's making good choices, and uh, it's really adult choices. He's having to take care of himself, um, but it's, it's really internal. It's, it's all in his head. A lot of it, there's not as much action as there is thinking and getting his perspective and what he's going through, so it was, it's a really nice to kind of step into someone else's black formal shoes, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely all the, does, is there a lot in there about um, the work he does do in the funeral home? That's another thing, uh, similar to the other title that I don't know much besides myself having attended a, like, they, any behind the scenes kind of? They do, they talk about, you know, just the setting up and the flowers and, and um, just kind of preparing for these grieving families to come in mm -hmm. and parts of the funeral and the past afterwards. And, um, but I read a little bit about it, Jason Reynolds and he talks about how boys don't want to read because they don't want to read boring books. And so he won't write boring books. So I don't feel like he goes so much into it that it's like you're talking about the adult ones. Yeah. Like, I don't need to see and hear more about your description of the meadow. <laughs> no, <laughs> Just get to the action. Book. What's happening? Yeah. 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 It's very much a teenage boy's perspective of what a funeral would be like. Yeah. So. Well, that's very interesting. And yeah. this yeah. this is in um, prose. It's a uh, some of his books are in um, free verse. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. More right. often now he's writing free verse, which mm -hmm. they're both wonderful. But, but this is this one is not one of those. Yeah, this anyone just knows yeah. his writing is you know, wondering, yeah. So this is an earlier book by him, but it had so much strength in it. Mm -hmm. and this young man is um, comes through a, a terrible situation because mm -hmm. of some of the people that he meets and help and guide him, like you said, his mentor, and also because of his strength inside. Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that I like about the one book, um, the kid for Nebraska kids and teen books that you selected. They, well, like some of the things like the Golden Sower Awards or other like Newbery and whatnot, they have to be something published this most recent year or whatever. Mm -hmm. These, it can be from any time. So mm -hmm. I think it's great to bring out, bring to kids and teens' attention. Here's a book you might not have heard of. It's not one of the most recently published, the one that's on top of Tip of Everybody's Tongue right now this year, but something from five, ten years ago or something that you that is still a good story and that you, you think you should um, take a read. That reminds me because I never really actually went through my list of criteria. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Time. We should do that. Yeah. And so now you can laugh at this one, but one of our, our first criteria is it needs to be available in paperback. Uh -huh. Because if you're buying a set for kids to read, that's much more affordable. Absolutely. So um, I've had one denominated that we put on the list, and then we had to wait a year before we could consider them to see if they came out in paperback. And then also, it needs to be of interest to the age group. So it needs to have something that will get the kids starting to read it. Mm -hmm. 
The third one, which I talked about before, it provides discussion. Because if you have a book that everybody likes and wasn't that fun and okay now, we don't have anything else to say about it, then you're, you're um, not having a good discussion. And the last one was the, the kids book in particular cannot be a recent Golden Sower nominee or particularly a winner because lots of kids have already read it. They've already discussed it if they had that option. There's nothing wrong with them discussing it again, but let's let's introduce a different book. So yeah. There's so many yeah. books published every year. Why would we latch on to one they've already read? And then um, at the time we made that rule, and this was in talking to Kathy Schultz, who's the Golden Sower chair, she said, I think it's all right for the, the teens selection to be have been a recent nominee, not never the winner, never the winner for that for the recent time frame. But it could be a recent nominee because there aren't as many kids participating in the in the Golden Soul yeah, novel to be reading. Mm -hmm. So um, that might be another way to get them to yeah. read those. And um, I also like the fact that it, that we just say recent. That doesn't mean because I have a book in mind for next year that's on my list <laughs> that's been a Golden Sower nominee for kids. And I'm going to just uh, put it in my proposed pile because I think it's been long enough that the kids who would be reading it now haven't, haven't seen it. Yeah. And so that's okay to introduce it to them again because it's also sure. a wonderful book. Mm -hmm. So that's just the four things that we came up with when we first started doing this. My youth advisory board came up with this with the help of Kathy Schultz when we asked her about it. And I'm always willing to revisit these. Maybe it doesn't have to always be in paperback, but that just seems mm -hmm. like it makes life easier for people. For the libraries to get a hold of them. The school mm -hmm. the libraries to get a bunch of copies, mm -hmm. yeah. And then they can donate them to us if they yes. don't want them. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. I mean, no, you sure can, but I mean, I'm not um, <laughs> begging. Another thing I wanted to say, I know we're coming up on the 11 here, mm -hmm. is anyone who's um, watching the show right now live or watching it at the recording, if there's a book that you have read or your kids in, at your library have read and just thought was great, send me a, an email because I can put it on my list. Because like you said, it doesn't matter if it's this year's mm -hmm. most popular book or if it was from three years ago, a popular book, and now nobody's talking about it, but it's still a terrific book. Then we'll, we'll put it on our consideration list. I don't want to impact my um, fellow commission staff members too much mm -hmm. with 10 hundred books to read, but there's some titles we might be, we haven't thought of. Yeah, yeah there that's, always are. Yeah. That's, that's a, there are so many books published and there's ones I never even hear about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let alone read. So always needing, always looking for input and ideas. Yeah. Absolutely. Suggestions and recommendations. They're always happy to get those. Now you said now it's a, our commission staff, we have a few mm -hmm. people that take do this. Is there any thought about trying to have another youth advisory committee that you talked about that didn't, mm -hmm. you know, kind of faded away, yeah. or inviting to see if any staff out there would be interested, library staff in the state interested in helping? I'd, or I'd, like to, I'd like to pull, ask some library people out in the state who are willing to read. You know, you could just say, I only want to read for the teen oh, yeah, choice, sure. or I only want to read for the kids' choice. And then you're only reading half as many books collected. Mm -hmm. um, I have one school librarian who's still we're in contact, and I send her what I as under consideration, and mm -hmm. she reads what she can get her hands on. That's another problem I know. Mm -hmm. You can't get your hands on all of the books necessarily mm -hmm. right away. I do not expect you to buy them. No, that mm -hmm. just because okay, I think it's a good book doesn't mean you need to buy it for your library. It's for your library, mm -hmm. but. Um, so yes, if you're interested in, in reading for either the kids list or the teens list, I'd be happy to hear about that too. We can mm -hmm. get a, another small group of sure. librarians. Yeah, it's good to have other more more perspectives and yeah. and you know um, ideas about what will fit you too. Because you know, not too many. You want too many yeah. um, people arguing over it. Yeah. But <laughs> and what it's been before, and and that's another thing is that we. Um, I send a list to the people who are willing to read, and they read what they can, and then they send in a vote. And I think a discussion 
is another good thing. Now that there's Zoom and other things, oh, yeah, it's a lot easier totally. for us to get together than right. it was before. So maybe that would that work be out. Probably, you look at travel to have yeah. a meeting, but now we've got yeah. like this, um, we could you guys could oh, meet or yeah. everything to, to really have a discussion. Mm -hmm. Because while I look at these books from my perspective and my viewpoint and, and look for qualities, I may not have ever considered something that someone else said, oh my gosh, Sally, you just better not choose that book because of this, which I just read right over and kept going. Uh, it didn't mm -hmm. impact me. Yeah. So it's good to have more than one viewpoint. That's Absolutely. why I have a small group here at the commission to try, mm -hmm. <laughs> to try not to overwhelm their voting. You will vote for my choice. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, we don't. Besides, we can't make any votes for me. <laughs> All right, so if anybody has any questions, type them into your question section. Let us know either about the books or the process or anything. Um, type them in there. Um, we can still go for a few more minutes. Um, anything else you guys want to say about the books or the process or the program? Well, I'd just like to say thank you, Amy, for enjoying doing the puzzle. <laughs> this all happened because I was, I was, a couple, was it two years ago that you started? Yeah. I had like eight, I, I can't remember why, but I had several things coming up and I wanted to get the puzzles out there and the discussion questions, etc. And I just couldn't get to it. So um, a couple other people here said, well, you know what? There's, I have time that I can just um, help out with this. I'll do some puzzles and, and yes, they are fun, but they take time yeah. and uh, work. So I really appreciate your Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. I think the first one that I did was the uh, oh, 2017. Yeah. And we've used a couple of these for book bases. We used the audio book oh. of Alcatraz for New Zealand mm -hmm. Librarian. Mm -hmm. And we used the back cover of Killer of Enemies that's got her face on it. Mm -hmm. So we've done that one. Uh, so yeah. Some lend themselves to it and some like yeah. Long Pitch Holmes does a great, doesn't really have a part of a no, you know, you want to like no. hard bodies like the boy in the black suit, which is um, uh, is that yet to be? Yeah, we have done that one yet. Sometime this year, yeah, so I have to do that one. Yeah. <laughs> you can see here that the blurbs that Sally was talking about in the yeah. previous years there. Oh, there's a blurb too. So there's the ones from 2018. So soon they'll be added to the ones for this year's books as well. They are compiled, they just need to get put on the page, which oh, you know, technically I can do and I'm capable of it. But it's so much more fun to say, yeah, yeah, please put it down. <laughs> and like five minutes later, bing, then oh, you know, she's better at it than I am. All right, it doesn't look like we've got any uh, <coughs> questions that anybody typed in while we were chatting. That's fine. Um, you guys know where to find Sally if you do have any questions. Sally and Amy here at the Library Commission. So if you do have anything you want to ask them. Or suggestions, suge yes, yeah, suggestions for books. Let them let us know for um, 2020. Is and you say you have a few on your pile of possibilities, so yeah. And I use that the idea is by this fall, um, NLA Nebraska Library Association conference, we would know what the titles will be for next year. It's just a great place yeah. to hand out a piece of paper that says, Oh, here's what we're going to have for those who are interested. Mm -hmm. Good info. You can have it at the commission. Yeah, that's when the beginning of October. So, we'll so if you did want to get involved in helping, that would be the thing between now and yes. end of September, I would say, yes. is when you would have to read and put in your vote for what you want. So that at conference, which I think is the first week of October, by then we have the information to hand give out to everybody. And I know that means summer reading program time. Yeah. But that's all right. But we said they're quick books. They're quick yeah. reads. Yeah. <laughs> Both of the kids' ones. They're, they're not as long. Not that's like trying to think. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I think that'll wrap it up then. Anything else in the last minute, last words you need to say? Just a big Let thank you to Natalie Lorenzo yes, for being awesome. here, so and you. Amy as well. Yes, thank you guys for um, helping me out with having a show this week. Um, <laughs> uh, as I said, on Sunday we found out that uh, Kathy's going to be unable to join us today, and there was a brief bit of panic on Monday morning, um, but Sally you know, stepped up and said, you know what, we can do this one. Yeah. We'll get it, we'll do it getting me on board and we're all, we're all set. <laughs> and we even have the All right. So that will wrap it up for today's show um, about our One Book for Nebraska Kids and Teens 2019. 
A mouse needs a new battery. Let's see if I can get it quicker. Um, so for the Encompass Live website, you go to the, I'm going to show you that right now. Um, you can search as we did for the one book on the commission page, but if you just go to your search engine of choice, so far, someday this is going to, I'm going to get, I'm going to be saying. wrong, but so far, Encompass Live is the only thing called that on the internet if you just Google it. So you can get to our page by just typing Encompass Live. Um, here is our upcoming shows we have scheduled, but for the archives, um, that's this link here right beneath um, the upcoming shows, and we've got our most recent one at the top of the list here, um, and then they just go backwards in date. So hopefully by the end of the day today, I'll have today's recording up, um, and right here at the top of the list, everyone who attended today and registered for today's show will receive an email from me letting you know that it's a bit ready, and then we'll push it out to our social media, to our mailing list, um, Twitter, Facebook accounts that we have here, so we'll have and bring up the slide. Um, and I love the fact that you can now search that archive. Yes. By title or um, keyword or whatever you want. Yes, this has gotten very unwieldy. <laughs> <laughs> um, this year, 2019, is the 11th year of the show. Wow. Yeah, we started in January 2009. Um, so there's a lot of shows here, but we are librarians, so we save everything <laughs> and for archival and historical purposes. So our entire history of shows is on here. If you wanted to scroll this whole list, you could get all the way to the end and get to 2009. Um, but that's a lot to get through. So we did have our, um, Vern, our um, uh, head of our computer team here, create a uh, nice search for me here. You can search the entire history of the show, or you can just do the most recent 12 months if you want to find just something just with recent info. Um, and that's important to know because um, when you are looking through these archives, pay attention to the dates of when something was originally broadcast. Everything has a date and a year on there because you will find his um, things here because it's 10 years worth of things that are old, outdated information, um, services and resources that maybe don't exist anymore, or links that are broken that we do not have the time to go back and fix broken links. But you know, just be aware of that when you're looking at a date on something, if you're looking at something from 2010, it might not be the most up to date info, but depending on the uh, topic, it could be a really inter you know, interesting thing to, to read out, up on. So um, keep that in mind when you're looking through our um, archives here. I still got to do next last week's. So you'll notice we've got the April 17th one here. I'm still I'm on vacation the last two weeks, so I still got to do last week's recording. But I'll, I'll get up there as well. Um, so that will be um, for the archive. Uh, Encompass Live is also on Facebook. I mentioned that um, we do have. There we go. We have a link here and on each of our show individual show pages that pops out to our Facebook page. So everything will be announced there. There's a reminder to log into today's show. Um, and I will. Um, so if you are big on Facebook, no, I don't. Um, if you're a big Facebook user, give us a like over there for the show and you will get notifications of when um, new shows coming up. Or we let people know when we have a change for this week's show um, and when their archives are ready and, and recordings are available. So give us a like over on Facebook if you want to. Um, so that will all pop up. I'm sorry, I was just going to say, and there I see July 24th, yes, the Golden, the Golden Sword. Sword. This was originally supposed to be today's show. We did announce the Golden Sword Award winner this morning. Um, but that has been rescheduled to July 24th. So if, if you were interested in that topic, you can go um, here now and register for it and join us then. Um, and I got changes. We're announced on April 1st, on May 1st. So, um, so definitely give us, um, you know, sign up for that one. And everyone who did, who had already registered for that show when I moved it to the um, July 24th date, those registrations automatically moved over to that date for them. Good. Um, they've all been notified, but in case anybody didn't um, hear to get that message or hear that, you know, watching this and I'll let you know, automatically moved your registration to that day, so you don't need to re-register if you are already registered for it on today. Good. That makes sense. It's good to me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah, Golden Solar coming up in July. So, uh, next week's show, I hope you join us for, uh, Small Libraries Can Run Code Clubs for Kids. Um, we will have Luke Miller, who is um, from Prenda, who does these code club code clubs. It's really hard to say. It is hard to say. Um, we'll be joining us to talk about how to do that, and also joining us will be the director at our O'Neill Nebraska Public Library. Um, they have one there that they've been doing, and I borrowed one of their promotional posters here. <laughs> uh, so uh, Jeannie will be joining us as well to talk about what they've done um, for their code club for kids. 
So please do sign up for that show if you're interested in any of our other ones coming up. We've got May all booked, as you can see, we're starting to get June filled in. Yes. Um, so keep an eye on the schedule to see what new um, topics we have coming up in June and July over the summer. Other than that, that wraps it up for today. Thank you very much, Amy and Sally and Natalie, who's already there. Thank you. And hopefully we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye.